Today we are very honored that we have TEDx Jaipur, but we are also honored to meet somebody very dynamic and intelligent, Ritu David, the founder of Ritu David Consultant. She is not only known for her consultancy, but yet yeah, a new name, Diva of Datas. Welcome to Hello Dotting, ma'am. Thank you. From social samosa to data dog, and now Ritu David Consultancy. How and when your journey began as a data analyst? Sure. Um, and how did it start? It everything. Everything start. So social samosa started when I first moved to India, and uh, I met somebody who wanted a data scientist to lead a social think tank, and that's how really my journey in social samosa started, which then introduced me to entrepreneurial India and, and to the startup space in India. And I, mm. I started um, my consulting firm, Ritu David Consulting. Mm. And then I realized that I wanted to be more than a one woman shop. I wanted a team. Mm. And so um, Ritu David Consulting still, still exists and we have uh, divisions under it. Mm. And one of the divisions is Data Duck. So, um, but, you know, that's very personal to me. But, but what has led me through this path has been um, like an obsession to solve problems using data and design mm. uh, and merging the two. They're not merged that often, you know, uh, but data and design work so well together. And uh, yeah. So uh, do you think that uh, social digital marketing, do you think India is ready for it? A country like India in digital marketing? I think digital marketing um, often is, is, is talked about as just programmatic marketing. Yeah. Uh, it's talked about as uh, social media and there's yeah. so much more to it but if we just look at social media yeah. you know we as as a country are mainly consumers of content yeah. and not creators of content so if you move to China you move to Australia you move elsewhere yeah. people create more content than they consume but we're a bit more shy about creating content and so um, with digital marketing what is really great about it is the feedback loop and, and the communities that you can create and the, the conversations that you can have. Mm. And I just find that maybe in a few years, India will be able to have those conversations. We're a little bit shy of putting ourselves out there, I think, on digital. How different is digital marketing to uh, conventional marketing? Well, I personally feel it's just about the medium, you know, whether you get to the place using an auto or you get to the place using a motorbike. It's effectively about people and it's about emotions. It's about um, connecting with people through those emotions and, and, and trying to understand what it is that a human being really wants. And and it is about want, it's not about needs. You know, so, so the greatest marketing campaigns have struck a chord within us and we feel somehow connected to them. And we can do that on digital and we can do that on traditional, but at the center of everything is the human and, and not the tech. You know. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, my uh, question to you is that these days, digital marketing, everybody wants to just jump into it. Yeah. Especially the young entrepreneurs and startups. Do yeah. you have any advice for them to be, you know, how to use it and how to be a part of digital marketing, how to take away in it? Sure. I think um, in digital marketing, there are two things. Um, that we're, are often missed when we start our careers. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I know that I missed it when I started mine. So it's, mm -hmm. it's not, you know, that, that someone's doing something wrong. It's just about an evolution of skill. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things is the broader purpose. It's about distilling. What you are doing is taking mm -hmm. a business and distilling it and putting it out on a, on a platform. Mm -hmm. And to distill a business that's been there that has its own character and, and to sort of take it and filter it through you, mm. through your company and put it out to the world is a big responsibility, yeah. you know? And so one must keep remembering mm. the brand of the business, the goals of the business, the top line goals of the business, the bottom line goals of the business. Also realizing that the consumer of the content that you're mm. creating on digital they have so much, they will not remember your post from last week. Yeah, you know? true. They have so much being bombarded at them. So really sometimes your differentiation doesn't come from just a creative that you put out. It is more of a strategy. And if we take a strategic level 
look at a marketing exercise over a year and how you build a brand and whom you decide to target. Mm. You know, that's something that will bring a greater ROI than just randomly doing whatever and hoping for the best. How does your marketing empower women entrepreneurs? I definitely think so. I, I think that um, part of it is that with digital marketing mm. is once again the human emotions which mm. I suppose as we are molded into being adults, you know, um, the motor skills, the STEM skills are often given to men and the more emotional skills, the more creative skills are, are given to women. We're, we're born alike, but somehow society morphs us to be different. And, and in digital marketing, um, you know, there is an opportunity to start up with very little capital. There's an opportunity to just give it a go. And, uh, the more and more women that get into digital marketing, it it gives um, younger women, older women, women around us, you know, a thought that hey, I can do this too. Mm. So, so I think in any field, the more women that enter it, um, the more positive it is for all of us, all of us out there. For men as well, because you get a totally different perspective. I mean remember that we're selling to 50% of the universe is women. So, you know, <laughs> they better be there. <laughs> they, yeah, we need to create the content that we consume. Yeah, right, yeah. true. Yeah. So any personal experience or first thing that you remember to get into the market? I think one thing that I, that I will never ever forget mm. is that communication mm. and connection and not talking about your business mm. don't hard sell mm. you know make true connections listen mm. to people understand people mm. and in those conversations people start to like you people start to think that you're intelligent and you can add value and they do refer you to people oh they do they do and that has been my experience i've never pitched but only been referred oh wow That's in my good. entire career so for me, I think one of the things is to just be your human self and just be thankful for every experience that you have. Take the best out of it and, and what you give to the universe is what you get. I really believe that. Now, because you said that you like fashion, according to you, which brand in the world right now is doing an amazing digital marketing in the world? In the world? Oh, my God. Any which brand do you think that's going, <laughs> going nuts right now? Well, I think Gucci has it nailed. Really? Um, I think their campaigns are, are really connecting with the millennial consumer. Mm. I think their campaigns are uh, moving from online to offline really seamlessly. Um, I love what they've been doing recently with the mural art and uh, with uh, the street art. It really brings a lot of grunge into a so-called high fashion world and, and yeah. we are moving towards a grungier sort of the ugly shoes are back. I own a pair of ugly shoes, you know. Yeah. So I think Gucci is doing a great job. Um, and which is your personal favorite? Personal favorite brand. Brand. It's very tough. I think it's it depends on my mood. Okay. But and it depends on what I'm wearing. But there is a lady who not many people know. Her name is Maria Grashvogel. Um, and she's a British designer and she does amazing jumpsuits and they just flow. It's like a, it's like you're wearing like liquid, a uh, like, like long jumpsuits that Ooh. just, they're just so good for women with curves, you know, <laughs> and, uh, you got a perfect fit though. Yeah. And it's a perfect fit. And I just feel like I'm floating on air when I wear her clothes and, and I think that's what clothes are about. Clothes are about how they make me feel. Mm. And um, and all her prints are really unique. And so I feel that I'm wearing a piece of art. Mm. And when we are wearing a piece of art, I think it just elevates the whole fashion experience. And that's what I think fashion is for me. It is about art. So you're here for TEDx. How was your whole experience of session? Oh, it was great. Uh, they started up out with musicians and I think the musicians help us i mean music helps us be creative it opens up our minds mm. like both of us are dancers so we know <laughs> how much music and art uh, can really influence your ability mm. to think creatively think out of the box and then once your mind is molded to receive such mm. um beauty and it starts to break away from its usual constraints mm. then to get an idea in mm. and to start thinking laterally is a lot easier so i think 
I think this is a genius move by TEDx to start with a music, music. Uh, piece and then moving on to the more uh, sort of idea focused pieces of content. Yeah. So the second segment of our show is basically a rapid fire round. I'll give you questions, you have to answer them as quickly as you can. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah. Hit to David is? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nice. Ritu, uh, Ritu's dress code is? Chic, elegant, quirky. Oh, yeah. I like Jaipur because? My family's here. <laughs> oh, so sweet. Which is sharper, a sword or social media? Social media. Oh. If not digital marketing, you would have been? A ballerina. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> you always wanted to? Yes. Oh. Favorite quote? Oh man, there's so many, but I think my current favorite quote is you miss a hundred percent of shots that you don't take. Oh, that's quite something serious. Do men finding you intimidating? I don't think so. <laughs> I smile a lot. Oh, maybe. Yeah. What is your mantra to rewind? To rewind? Like, like how do you go back onto things? Oh, what do you mean? I'm confused, sorry. Oh, how do you, like, what do you want in life, like a mantra, one huh. thing, that tip that you go rewind if you're like too much in pressure? Oh, yeah. Rewind yourself. Yeah. You rewind okay, okay. yourself. Um, to be back in the business. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, should we do that again? Yeah. yeah. What, what is your favorite mantra to rewind? I really believe we're energy. And we are what we put out into the world. So every time I'm being really negative and I feel that I'm the victim of, you know, the world and everything, um, I remind myself that I can, I have a choice and I have a choice to change that negative energy into mm. positive energy. And I, and we are magnetic people. And, mm. and so what I put out is what I receive. And that's what I believe. Yeah. It's tough though. <laughs> it's tough. Are you foodie? Yeah. Yes. Unfortunately, not the kind of foodie where people are like, oh, let me eat a little bit of that. It tastes good. Let me take a hundred photos and then stop. Uh, but a foodie who uh, generally eats. Yeah. Genuinely eats. Yeah. yeah, good. One thing that you're going to be eating in Jaipur soon. Oh my God, I love, love everything. But what I love most is my Mossy's achar. Oh. My Mossy's here. Oh, so <laughs> she gives these achar things. I don't know. Which one? Lisorik achar. Lisorik achar. Oh, nice. Yeah. Do you need digital detox? I do. Everyone does. But it's not just digital detox. It's detox from everything. And and I think we live in a world where offline and online isn't different. You know. Mm. So when we go into a quiet room mm. and shut the door and just maybe watch something on Netflix. That is a detox in a sense, and it is a di digital detox too, because you're switching off 99% of your digital things, but you're also switching out 99% of your physical world. So I think a detox is just a detox, you know. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was an honor to listen to you. And I'm sure the same will go to the viewers also. You are such an inspiration to us and so many girls out there. I'm sure the young generation is going to take it very seriously. I think you all work very hard. It's about working smart and it's about believing in yourself truly. So thank you for this opportunity. I think you're brilliant. I love the fact that you're doing styling because I am pottering into fashion and pottering into other things too. And having a portfolio career today is great. Oh, thank you so much. I hope to see you soon. And we are very thankful to our makeup and hair partner, Silence Scissors. Stay tuned with Hello Dotting. Is it me you're looking for?